we've actually got a cracked piston. Just going into the gudgeon pin area here where the circlip is, a crack just there, a stress crack just here. So heads have come off the S63, that was a straightforward process and nothing too interesting, so we haven't bothered showing that. Um, but now we've got the block uh, still on the stand on the BMW tool, and it's turned over so that we can actually start undoing the uh, Comrod caps and then putting the special tools onto the Comrod and then sending the Comrod and the piston through. As you can see, we've just taken out this first one, which is incidentally cylinder number one. This is the one that had a bent rod and the whole reason why we're doing this um, entire engine build is because of bent rod on number one. So um, interestingly, we've found that we've definitely got a bent rod. Let's go and show you that rod a bit closer now. So here is exhibit A, which is the cylinder number one piston and rod. Now this is definitely bent. We've got a slight bend in this plane. When we look at it this way, it's not completely straight. And what we were seeing in the car is from this angle, and we've definitely got a bend probably somewhere about there it's going down that way more so rather than going straight it's going down and then back up and we've got a slight twist in it as well so interestingly once the rod bends we know that then the rod shortens effectively because when you put a bend in something it's then not the same length anymore and these pistons run so close to the opposing web of the crank that when they're shortened they make contact the piston make contact with the crankshaft web and we can see what's happened here We've actually got a cracked piston just going into the gudgeon pin area here where the circlip is a crack just there a stress crack just here and i think there was a third and a fourth but it might be yeah there we go there's the other one just down there and these are minute and what's happened and what was given the knocking noise is this piston was coming into contact with the crankshaft web and it wasn't in fact the comrod bearing or the comrod knocking against the crankshaft the knocking noise was because the bent rod shortened itself which made the piston then come into contact with the crankshaft and you can see all this area here which has been touching the crankshaft web let's see if we can set that down all this shiny no it won't sit still but let's look at it at this angle all this shiny contact here this should have been completely flat and we can see we've got a nice sharp edge here where this metal has been displaced and obviously the contact has cracked the piston there, there, there and I think there was a fourth one as well but now this has turned into um, an even more expensive build because it was going to be expensive anyway because we needed rods, we now need piston as so well. So just going to show Luke's using the BMW Special Tools, now these are really important to use not only to not scratch the crankshaft journal but it's an alu seal bore which is obviously very um, not unique but very delicate you can't hone it correct uh, properly so when we take a comrod back through the engine and bring the piston out from the underside of the engine which is exactly what's going on now we need to be extremely careful the rod doesn't touch the bore and the way to do that is use the BMW special tools yes you could wrap them up with paper but why when BMW you sell this tool system is about £75 and it's plastic or Delrin. One is longer so you can pull or push and they overlap the outer parts of the rod so there's no chance of the rod scratching the journal or the alu, sorry, the alu seal bore of the engine block. So now we've got uh, two of them out we can now just show you how close these pistons run um, in nearly in contact with the web or the balancing web weight of the crankshaft. Luke's going to turn the crankshaft over because we've got the damper still on there so we can see the internal workings of the engine and the comrods and the pistons going up and down and what we're looking at is if you could keep turning please Luke keep on rotating this web comes into massive so close contact into the piston if we just keep going a few more times turning it over nearly into contact now hit it it didn't hit it, but if you had a bent rod, it would be hitting about now. And you can see that area is meant to be completely flat. And on our piston that we've taken out on number one, it's been scored. And that's obviously come into contact with that. And the reason why is because the piston was able to come down the bore further than it ever should do, because the rod was shortened because it had a bend in it. Why it had a bend in it is still unknown. We don't know whether it's a fueling issue. We don't know whether it was... Uh, I don't know too much boost or the we just don't know the rods are slightly 
um, they've got a slight reputation for being weak. There's still a fairly new engine. And as these go on years and years, we'll know a bit more how many rods start bending. But these are just N63 rods. We've obviously got an S63 engine here, but these are the exact same part number as any N63, it's 550, 750, anything like that. So they're designed to take a set amount of power. Obviously, BMW thought they were able to take S63 power and they just took them off the shelf and put them in the S63. Maybe that wasn't quite a good idea. They might certainly hold out for normal power, but obviously many people do like to remap the cars and um, and add more power because it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to do. But maybe there is a consideration for um, having to up, think about uprating internal components, certainly like Comrods, um, which it may well turn out to be um, in this case. And if you wanted to know how well the S63 TU is faring, um, reliability-wise, well, we've got one here, which has obviously got a bent rod, and now it turns out a cracked piston. Now let's just walk through into the other workshop, and we've got another F10 M5, which has just come from a BMW main dealer because they didn't want to fix it. This is how it's arrived with no sump on. This is in because it's got a failed bearing as well. We haven't yet fully taken it apart or worked out exactly what's failed, but um, it's arrived with main bearing cap bolts missing and it was just thrown back together by the looks of it. But that's another F10 M5 S63 TU you're looking at there with 63,000 miles on this one. This has got a failed bottom end bearing. Um, and also on Monday in two days time, we've got another one arriving, which has got a knocking noise to investigate as well. Um, so I'm not saying they're bad. Uh, they might be a little bit weak internally. It obviously puts out a huge amount of torque, these engines, especially if you're considering remap. So um, they're only eight years old at the moment. So I think there's, there's some suggestion to say that they are gonna need more um, care and attention, more preventative maintenance, and possibly some uprating internals if you are thinking about higher power from these F10 M5 S63 TU engines.